Hello, welcome everybody. It is Friday, at least where I'm at, and uh, we're going to have another celebration with Working Out Loud today. I am your host, Dave Darrington, and as always, this show is weekly, bi-weekly. We do it all the time. It's about learning. It's about learning software, particularly we, we niche down into business to business or B2B software as a service or SaaS, B2B SaaS. B2C is in there too, and in general, all kinds of software are what I love. We are wanting to work on the next step of we know software is eating the world, right? Changing the world, consuming everything we know. Our life is living behind a computer these days. But what we're doing on this show is a little bit different. It's about working out loud. We're going to pick a problem. We're going to talk about a new technology. We're going to talk about how that, that technology is solving it and making the world a better place, or at least our jobs. So without any further ado, I want to welcome my friend, Lauren Kennedy. Yay. Hey, well, hey, Lauren. <laughs> hey, hey. How are you doing? It's wonderful to have you on the show. We have been longtime uh, Gainside alums and known each other for quite a while. So let me give you the floor for just a moment and let you introduce yourself. Tell us where you're coming in from and uh, let's go for it. Yeah, so excited to be here. A great Friday morning. Um, just like Dave mentioned, we started um, at Gainsight, not totally around the same time, but not too far apart. Yeah. Um, I was there for a couple of years and then since have been at a couple of different startups and really spending um, about seven, eight months at Glean, which is very exciting, coming to you from Palo Alto, California, which is actually my hometown, so native Bay Area resident. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, excited to be on here. This is great. Um, it's, it's really fun in, in particular, Lauren, to meet with folks that we've you know kind of had similar journeys and different and similar uh, companies and how we've I'll use a big word today today peregrinated. We've we've had a journey to go to different places pursuing the things we really love, you know, yeah. and you're still in the software field and you've gone through a couple of places. But yeah. before before we go a little bit further, I like I always like to have you talk about your story, uh, call it the origin story. Um, but what I want to do first is, is is set us up for a really good discussion today. And this is the discussion after we've been chatting back and forth for a while, and we have a problem here. This problem that I that I think about is okay. I went to work for a new company. Let's let's go back in time to gain sight. I don't know about you, Lauren, but at the time it was between 20, 2015, 2017. We didn't have much of an education. We had documentation that was great. But I'm trying to figure out what this company is about, what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to do it, who the people are, yeah. um, what they know. They're not in there. I can't talk to them. How do I find a how do I find anything and, and navigate my way around? This is not even education yet. It's like proto education. Yeah. But you know, and that problem that that we have plagues us even further because think about, okay, let me ask you uh, before we get into origin story, I'm still setting up, but what is that? How do you, how do you really get to learn the things you need to know and find them? You know what I mean? That that pain that we have if I know I have to go to some person and that some person got hit by a truck. Okay. So so what I'm framing up is that we're trying to get to knowledge in our peers that's locked in their heads, locked in their files, maybe on their desktop, maybe in the cloud. Most everything's in the cloud. If it takes me an hour to find something, that's how many, how many dollars? If it takes 10 people to find that, now we've, com we've complicated that. We're translating to loss of time, loss of money, and maybe loss of a customer Yeah, who's in trouble, right? So I set that up right. Lauren, can, can you take the lead from that? Yeah, totally. You did a great job. I mean, <laughs> I, I think you, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep with kind of the, the needle in the haystack, but I think you hit the nail on the head, right, of whether you're a new employee, whether you've been at a company for a long time, the problem of knowledge growing and expanding, or maybe not problem, because it's great that knowledge is expanding, but but the problem being able to find it is getting worse every single day, right? If not every minute, right, you, that you're on calls with customers, that you are yeah. having 
discussions live, discussions over tools, you know, chat tools, whatever you may use. So it's really something that, you know, when we talk to our customers, they're like, look, this is getting harder and harder every single day. And then add on, by the way, Dave, like when you and I started at Gainsight, mm -hmm. that was before we were all working from home. We could go tap somebody on the shoulder. It was still really expensive to go tap them on the shoulder because now I'm taking up time of two people. But you could actually just go tap somebody on the shoulder. For the last two, two plus years, you haven't been able to go do that and tap that person on the shoulder and, and get your quick answer. And so Glean is really solving both the problems from before you know, the pandemic, but also especially now, right, where companies are exploring, do we do remote? Do we do hybrid? Do we do in office? No matter what, finding content, finding people is an expensive activity for every company. Um, and so that's what Glean is really looking to do is basically saying, look, we all have this amazing knowledge. Just how do we help people find it? Or I think even I've been talking to a lot of our end users recently. And one of my favorite interviews was somebody was just really honest and they go, look, sometimes I just give up on trying to find something. Oh, no. And uh, and either I just give up or I give up and I start making a new version of something. And then maybe two weeks later, I'll find out that a piece of content already existed. And so now we have two things, maybe answering the same question, but different perspectives. So I appreciated that one because I think we can, if we're all honest, we can all say we've done that, right? Where you just kind of give up, you know, throw up your hands and say, look, I can't, I can't find it. So maybe I'll just make it, uh, which then oh, just can solve the problem too. Okay. Well, that, that really frames up our, our working problem. Yeah. Where I remember, and, and if those of you, I'll, I'll break the fourth wall and talk to those of you who are maybe listening right now, chime in. I see, I see a lot of folks out there say hello in the comments. Let's throw some questions out there. This is actually a live stream. At the moment there's 11 and counting. All right. Say good morning, all of you. Um, I want to know more about this problem space. Now I'm really, I'm really kind of intrigued. Now what, Again, to finish the frame up, there was something that I came up with, and I think your own team thought this was was a good way of approaching it. I entitled this Finding a Needle in the Proverbial Haystack, right? Mm -hmm. Where I haven't thought about that term in a long time, but as an I'm speaking to you, Lauren, as both a customer success professional yeah. uh, and an educator, yeah. which puts me in a really weird spot, right? There are growing more of, of people like me. And I actually, I want to thank Gainsight for, for, you know, that, that origin story that we had at that point where my career kind of started to veer off was, and where I focused and yeah. where, why I'm talking today is because we were having the same problem of trying to help customers be successful and to help customers be successful. There's an enablement function and that happens internal to our organization. Right. So I might be, and here's a really prescient problem. I'm a CSM. Okay. We know that role really super well, don't we? You're the yep. head of CS. Yep. I don't think we, we got to get back to talking about your role in a little bit, but as, as a person in customer success, particularly as a company that's just starting out or growing really fast, or then in hyper growth where you're like in free fall going, Oh my God, I'm just going to hang on. Well, I'm going to hang on to, I'm just going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> There's that moment in time where I go, look, I have a deal with a customer and they depend on this information. Can I do this integration? That's a sales channel, right? Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Jane did the last integration and she's not here and whatever. And oh my gosh, uh, I can't get to this. Finding that needle, that needle is a Google doc or a text file or mm -hmm a PDF as somebody scrolled down from a picture on the wall and saved into a, into a cloud file and it's there and I got to find that. Yeah. And, and I like what your organization, again, this is not as much about product. I wanted to talk about your product yeah. and talk about how that product solves a problem space and expand that problem out and then like really get into how we're leveraging this. I like the phrases that we were talking about in the back end. Uh, know what your company knows instantly. Wow, that would be magic. Omni, omni, what is that? Omni knowledge, um, yeah. omniscience. Sorry, <laughs> uh, empowering file employees to find the files they need. Yeah, okay. How to equip your employees with the answers they need? Absolutely. We're not going to get this through necessarily training, and then mm -hmm. deepening that employee engagement in the space of all the the data we've got. Like I look yeah. at Jira and Confluence and all these places and Google Drive and all right, needle haystack. Let's let's slow down. 
Yeah. And I want to talk about your journey and I really like to build this up Lauren. Mm -hmm. I want to know where, like, how did you get here to glean and now where are you coming from? And let's really dive into how your product, your platform is different and really yeah. helping to solve that problem. Okay. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Um, so we'll start at the beginning. Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah. Origin story. Yeah. Perfect. So like, <laughs> I said, like I said, um, one of the, I think rare, maybe I'm not sure how rare we are these days, but rare barrier natives. Um, and so I grew up surrounded by tech though, not really, you know, super ingrained in it, um, bounced kind of around places, went to school on the East coast. Um, and honestly, I like to make the joke now that I actually do what I majored in, which I, you know, I don't know how many people get to say that, but, um, <laughs> it's, it's not like there was a customer success major or, you know, I know some colleges are starting to have programs, but, um, but I majored in sociology and minored in technical communication. And fundamentally, I think oh, that's wow. what success is, right? It's understanding the society of your own company. It's understanding the social construct of all of your customers and what are the, you know, the politics and the, the rules that they all have and how do you basically work within that? Um, so I, I like to make that little cheesy joke, but <laughs> came back to the Bay Area and basically said, okay, the good jobs are in tech. Awesome. It sounds interesting. Uh -huh. I'm not going to be an engineer. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, you know, I think it's, it's good to be honest about your skill sets. Um, so what am I going to do? Like, how do I fit into tech? Um, and, uh, you know, started at my first company where I was employee 19, really small. Oh, wow. And yeah, kind of got to do everything, which I'm ultimately really grateful for, you know, did what was kind of customer success before I totally knew what that was, did mm -hmm. marketing, did, you know, recruiting and some HR, definitely did, you know, SDR, cold calling work, renewals, upsells, kind of. You did it all. You had all the hats. Everything except for engineering. Um, but, uh, but really enjoyed it and, and, and found that really what I enjoyed was that kind of sociology aspect, right, of getting to talk to people every day and build those relationships and understand what works for them and what doesn't and how do we communicate effectively together. Exactly. Um, and so did that. Um, I then kind of uprooted my life and moved to New York, which was super fun and, and really started to get more ingrained in customer success and a startup there. Um, and then was really fortunate. I moved back to the Bay Area and had a friend from high school who was working at Gainsight, who I ran into, um, which was great. Um, and was able to, to get the opportunity to work at Gainsight. Um, and was there for three years. And obviously that's where, you know, I and you and many other people really solidified, like, this is, this is my niche and this is what I do. Um, and while I was at Gainsight, managed a couple of different teams there, uh -huh. uh, oftentimes around the mid-market, which, you know, is such a fun segment to get to work with. The, oh, yeah. The those are the customers who are really in transformation, which is what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, uh, did that and then had the opportunity to join another startup. Um, by the time I, you know, was thinking about leaving Gainsight, which was one of, I remember crying, telling um, Nick <laughs> and other folks that I was, I was leaving, but I was really excited about the idea of getting back into the startup world. Gainsight was a couple hundred folks, um, if not close to a thousand by the time I was departing. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, got introduced to Glean and in all honesty, just kind of said, look, I'm, you know, I'm either going to join or I'm going to figure out how to get the budget for Glean. Um, because <laughs> I have a problem, right? <laughs> to, your, to your point, I had um, hired a couple of folks at my previous role. And, you know, as much as I like being helpful, answering the same question multiple times a day isn't fun oh, yeah. for me. Not a great use of my time. I also think one of the things I realized was dependent upon how much time I had to answer, folks were getting a different response from me. Sometimes it was, you know, me telling them to go find a file in Google Drive, or sometimes it was taking yeah. the time to write out an answer, or sometimes it was, hey, let's hop on a quick Zoom, you know, and, and talk through this live. So they were also getting a different level of engagement for me and, and type of answer, which is also not ideal from their perspective. Um, so yeah, I, I, I felt the problem firsthand. I, you know, I think I could look back at every single job I've had and think of a moment where finding knowledge was a problem. Um, and, and that just really stuck with me. Um, and so, yeah, I have been here for about, like I said, seven, eight months, um, and we're growing, um, and there's a lot of really exciting stuff happening and, and it's, it's a fun topic to get to talk about. That's why when you and I were talking about, and, and one of the things that I love doing like you 
And I, fi- I found that was part of my passion was that talking to people was a big part of my, de- my day yeah. and asking about problems and helping them solve them. And there, that infuriation and frustration. Now we're, let, let's go back and put this into light, right? Mm-hmm. We've done a, re- why I ask about origin stories and the people mm-hmm. that are behind the technologies like you is because you're really important to this whole thing. I heard you talk about the culture the organization, the things that um, not all, not everybody listening to the show, not everybody is like how we have pursued our careers, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, there's this phrase of a startup person. (laughs) And I think that really boils down to somebody that, you know, regardless of who we are, we're not, I'm not an engineer. You aren't either. Not going to aspire to be one. Because I write code really slow, um, but we you have got the same me beat problem. There, Dave. <laughs> What's that? You got me beat there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because I'm slow and buggy, <laughs> so I don't do it. But you know, like let's get back to the problem area where, hey, you know, all this stuff now is in the cloud, and if you're a lot like me, I'm working. I'm hanging on by the skin of my teeth some days i've got to get a, an estimate to a customer a customer is asking for some file on my employee needs some stuff from me and oh god where did i put that i work in google workspace a lot blast google for being amazing for giving us all the tools we need to do our jobs but you know what organization's kind of lacking <laughs> <laughs> what about okay and not not to put the finger on google how about um, I'm working in a Microsoft environment and I've got files all over the place in my OneDrive or whatever. But then I don't have OneDrive. I have my company uses Box. I have mm-hmm. Dropbox. I have another folder. Um, then I've got a Confluence stand up. I might be using various different applications. They all have knowledge in them. Then I have a learning system. Then I have a knowledge base. Then I have, <laughs> do I want to go on? No. Yeah. Am I hitting the core problem here pretty well? Yeah, abs- I mean, absolutely, right? It's, we have tools, each tool solves a certain problem, absolutely, but there may be overlap, right? And I, I think I mentioned a little bit ago, I've been talking to a lot of our end users, right? The the folks actually sitting behind the computer every day at our customer companies. Yeah. And something that's been coming up a lot recently is Glean lets me continue to work how I want to work, but means that my peers can find whatever I'm doing. Ooh. Right. So I might prefer writing in Google Workspace, but you might prefer, you know, Box and somebody else might prefer just doing long posts in Slack. Right. Th- those are all different. Oh, no. we're, like, <laughs> we're all thinking of that person. We're like, man, I like Google and they like Slack. And we just are always in this or place. email or email. It You know, it doesn't matter anymore with Lean and it allows people to do what works for them and work within their own their own best practices, but it doesn't mean that what I'm creating becomes siloed, which I think is really, really critical. And it kind of doubles down on that. Like what's the, the cost of finding content? Cause I've also been at those companies, right? Where you get the really rigorous process of this is where you document and this is how you do it. And if it doesn't work for you, it just doesn't work for you. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's pretty neat that one, that it's actually interesting. You mentioned that. Cause I was on, um, I was talking to actually a CSM at one of our customers based, he's based out of Australia yesterday um, and he said exactly that I can work where I want to work and everybody can find what I'm doing. And it was, he, you know, he just kind of lit up talking about it and it was really, really a fun discussion. That is a really fun discussion. And that's one that's, that's kind of eye opening now. Um, well, let me ask you some other questions then. And yeah. I wanted to ask you this as well. Did you have any, a demo or anything that you could show us? So I, I was looking through your script and I saw some good keywords. I didn't know if you were set up for that and I didn't prepare yeah. you for it. That yeah, would be I, can do, I can do a little quick something if that if that, that would be perfect because this yeah. showing I, I'm I'm originally from Missouri that means I go by the mantra show me mm-hmm. <laughs> which, which so if you if you want to do that in the back end while we're we're talking I'll answer a couple or ask a couple questions until then yeah I can be pretty ready to go so you just let cool. me know well okay let me ask you one more question about. Yeah. There, there's a term, and I'm, I'm intentionally going to ask this question because it comes up, and I know what the answer is already because we talked yeah. about it. Um, so I'm going back into my own narrative where I've hosted a, a podcast called C-Lab, the Customer Education Laboratory, for years. My co-host on that, Adam Evermescu, who now works at Prisonio, 
um, he's in customer success and customer ed and all, all the things too. Back in time a bit in the way back machine, he was working in a, a platform called Optimizely where we were, they, they didn't have a solution to a problem set where they needed to show, be able to search education and to be able to search a knowledge base and be able to search a community. And back in time at Gainsight, we had something like this too, a mm -hmm. solution that was called a federated search. Mm -hmm. And the platform was ugly. It was hard to use. It was hard to set up and configure that I used. Uh, Adam's platform, Adam's solution was something completely different. But yeah. neither one of them were anything that were easy. <laughs> and we called those federated search. The I add this source and I add this source and I add this sources, but it was very limited and it kind of returns some stuff. Yeah. How does how does your platform different around? How does the solution different from that? Yeah, it's a it's a good question, and it definitely comes up. I mean, at the end of the day, Glean is not a federated search. That that is, it still exists. It's an alternative. Just to keep kind of high level from a technical perspective, it's I would say it's clunkier, it's slower, and it's heavier on kind of all of your systems. What Glean is doing is connecting directly to the platforms that you're using. Obviously, they are very, you know, very stringent security and respecting all the permissions within all those applications. But it's essentially connecting to that. So we're able to talk a lot faster to all the different platforms that you're using every day. Okay, that's cool. So we're hooking them all up. Mm -hmm. And that and we've already talked about that that pain. So what okay, this is a good time then. If you could pull up a quick demo. Yeah. Let's yeah. just see it. Let, let's see it in yeah. action. So now I'm mm -hmm. I'm at my company. I'm I'm hanging out with Lauren, and we have a question. And what do we want to know about? So you can just hit the sh present button at the bottom of your okay. your screen. Scream! <laughs> it's Halloween. I'm thinking. <laughs> we actually, you know, it's funny. I was. Um, we have a hollow glean party today. <laughs> like, we're getting really into it. Um, let me go ahead and do this. Give me one second. Um, and yeah, maybe while, while we're doing this, I'll just kind of share, um, that on top of, you know, the difference between Glean and Federated Search, Glean, I'm going to use, you know, the, the big ML term, but the machine learning within Glean, right, is what's learning every single time you do a search or your team members do a search. It's learning, what am I looking for? What sort of content are you trying to find? Um, so that, that to me too, is one of the big differentiators is that Glean is basically, now we're going to get really meta, but as you're learning, Glean is learning with you, right? And it's learning how to help you more and help you better. Yeah. Um, That's fabulous. Perfect. I have to ask the forever question. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Oh, let me see what's going on here. I should see a little pop up on mm -hmm. my screen. I'll go a little meta and I'm, I'm using StreamYard as a, my platform, which works uh, pretty good usually. I, I got to hop into system preferences really quickly. Give me a second. Okay. Oh, it's blocking you. Um, no, so no. while you're doing that and you're cognitively overloaded, uh, I'll take the, I'll take the reins. I can see your stuff. Um, one of the things, those of you, I'm going to break the fourth wall again. I see there's a number of you out there in the community. Say hello. Tell us who you are. If you have some questions, we want to hear them. We're going to answer those questions in the chat. We've got a half an hour yet for this show, roughly. Uh, tell us where you're coming from. Tell us what you're interested in. Tell us what you're looking for. Um, while, um, if Let me know when you're ready. Oh, you've got your system stuff. I'll see it pop up. Um, uh, also, on Working Out Loud, one of the things that we're doing is we want to have these kinds of conversations. If you're interested in talking about your platform, product, your solutions, the things that you do, give us a call. You know, give me a call. We want to talk about all, how, we, uh, how we craft interesting solutions with technologies and surface them to our customers and then train them to use them, right? Lauren, how are you doing there? You know, Dave, my choices are not screen share or quit Chrome and join again. Um, nah, let's not worry about it then. All right, we'll skip. Wonderful. That. We'll continue our conversation, but um, and hope for a few more questions. Well, okay, I'm going to shift gears. I really yeah. understand this problem, and we don't. Yeah. I, I even visually, I know how to use Google. I know how to use a web browser. That's the kind of that's the kind of play. So if we are needing to find something, you're saying we're using machine learning. Our platform's mm -hmm. learning along with you. It's didn't you say that your folks were ex Google engineers that came over and, and started to think about the difference of how would we do this for an organization, not for the 
universe. <laughs> yeah. Or I would even, um, I would, the way I would frame it. So short answer, yes. Lots of um, our CEO and founder, Arvin Jane was at Google on the search, um, on the search side of the house. So really knows what, what he's doing. Um, but it, I would even frame it differently is we have Google for the world. Why don't we have Google for the workplace? Right. Why can't that exist for us when there's just as much content or sometimes it feels like just as much content, I should say, just in my day to day <laughs> job than there is in the entire wor world. Right. Um, and so it was why doesn't it exist and let's go create it and make it so that people can find the content that they're looking for because we have it in our day to day. Well, OK, I'm, so I'm really thinking about education right now. So let's let's kind of role play a little bit and I'm going to play. I haven't done this before, so this will be fun um, by what I do in customer education, you and I are very complimentary, right? Mm -hmm. You're in customer success. And what your role is, is to help that customer to be successful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, you know, that sounds stupid the way that I put that, but it's not, it's, I've got this person, they're trying to do something. They're frustrated, they're challenged or whatever. I'm in a company and I'm trying to find some things. How do you go about teaching me? What are the aspects and the elements that, that, I can be successful with your platform. How are you thinking about education? Where do I, where do I start? There's a good, there's a good question. I yeah. want to find something. What am I doing? Yeah, it's such a good question. I do think one of the powers of Glean is that it really comes down to what is your job to be done, right? And your role is particularly interesting, Dave, because you're using it both as an end user of, I need to find content just for myself to do my job, but you're also using it from that. How do I disseminate information within? Yeah, there you go. Right. And so Glean not only has functionality around finding content that already exists. So for me, I'll type in a customer name, right? I'm going to get on a call with a customer who I don't talk to on a regular basis, or even for my team members who are talking to customers on a regular basis, five minutes before their meeting, they can just type in the customer name. It'll pull up the last EBR deck they made for it. They'll pull up Slack oh, messages wow. around it, or internal, you know, anything internal that they've got going on with it. Um, uh, so you can get up to speed on something like that, right? You can search for existing content, but Glean actually also offers other functionality around creating knowledge management. And there's things like answers, which are kind of FAQ questions. So one of the, you know, forever questions is, What's our vacation policy, right? That's what we're really looking for, especially coming up to the holiday season. So I can type that in and there's just a quick answer, right? That just says, what's our vacation policy? And somebody's just listed out, somebody on the HR team, right? Has just listed out the days of our vacations. Um, or from your perspective, there might be a question about, you know, what's our best practice process around something specific to our organization? There's a quick piece of content that you've actually created in Glean to answer that super fast. Um, there's also functionality around the concept of, um, I think we all, or not all, but I know a lot of folks like to organize things, right? We, as humans, yeah. we kind of keep yeah. things organized. And what happens is you say, I have a lot of content as an education professional where you're like, look, I've got some things that I've built out in drive, some things I've built out maybe on Confluence wiki pages. Some things are just URLs of external resources that I want my team to be able to get to quickly. I can't, how do I group those all together? under say maybe an onboarding you know, category. We have a concept of something called collections, right? Where you can go in and drop all that content into one place and then share that out with folks. So your specifically interesting use case, which is why it's fun to talk to you of, you can use it for your own job, but you actually can use it to do your job too, right? And to help spread that education and knowledge within the organization. That, okay, that's exactly what, it's, it's a novel educational use case that mm -hmm. you can leverage as a company to teach people about your product, but also it's sticky, right? This is really this is really cool. When we started talking about it, I go, well, one of the big problems that we have in customer education, one of the challenges that I work to help customers with every single day mm -hmm. is, all right, we've got this product, how do we use it? I am a big fan of, probably because I worked with Nick Meta for the Meta, <laughs> M-E-T-A yeah. now, of, and not the company, uh, behind doing my job. That if I can use my own product, it's 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 like that. How do I embed my education and training within the product? In your case, you can kind of leverage your own product to do the education about yep. the product itself, right? Absolutely. Oh, go to go to this page. This page is your collections page. Oh, and things are being added to it over time. What I can bookmark this and then 
and I, now I'm kind of foreshadowing or, or thinking ahead is, yeah. you know, my biggest problem, Lauren, from day to day is I have a set of things that I found and discovered that I need to use. Oh, there was a report in this pl platform that I have for my my CRM that I use all the time. There is this thing. There's another. Then I forgot where it was. <laughs> or yeah. I've made a whole bunch of files and I forgot where they were too because I'm running and this makes me sound totally disorganized. But it's, it's everybody. Less, is it? Is it really? <laughs> yeah, it really, it's everybody, right? Because we're all moving quickly. We're all, you know, you're, you're working on something and then you get a Slack message and then you go back to working on that thing but then you've navigated to a different Slack channel and you can't remember what that first message was about, right? And so how do you find all of that quickly and in, and in one place? Yeah, if you're not alone. Yeah, that's the that's a deeper problem, right? That I want to find something quickly. I know it's there. I saw it. But this is where as human beings, we said we're, we're kind of failing. And that's why we need products and platforms and tooling mm -hmm. like this. And I could see this really extending the capabilities of my organization where, yeah. okay, let me take another example. Now let's talk education. As an educator, yeah. one of the biggest foundational problems I have is what I call the action of turning, turning what's in, you know, your thoughts, your ideas and your knowledge into pixels. Mm -hmm. But what I do beyond that is, okay, now we're back to a use case. We're in the cloud. I'm an education team. You know what my job is. I've got to help other people. Internally, how that makes me feel is, okay, Lauren, you're my subject matter expert. In fact, we probably had conversations back, back in the day. What happens is in the old days, <laughs> two years ago, three years ago, pre-COVID, uh, I would let, you're in California, right? You Or you were at the time. And I was in, we had a St. Louis office and let's go back to the, the moment where you were talking about, you know, it was expensive, but it wasn't expensive back in the day because we were in the office. Well, let's put this into dollars or conceptually. Mm -hmm. I want to find, I want to add, do some education. I want to build a module on how to use Glean. Okay. Who's the best? Oh, Lauren. Okay. I'm going to go talk to Lauren. We're new. Maybe we're a 30 person company, a 40 person company. There's nothing. There's just garbage all over the place because, you know, you get in the work and you're like, oh, I got to start doing the thing. And, you know, all this a peripheral organizational work doesn't get done. Yeah. So here I am. I come into the company to build education because I, as an educator, my job is to lift, organize, curate and push back out to the world how you would train somebody on this platform, how you would approach that platform. But you're freaking busy. <laughs> you're the head of CS. You're out there talking to customers and stuff. I don't have access to you. Mm -hmm. I could have gone over and grabbed your chair. Lauren, hey, what's up? Do you want to go to lunch? I need to ask you a few questions. Are you buying, Dave? Yeah. Okay, that's how things got done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we go over to what what's the what was the famous place, the sandwich shop in um in, in the uh the office at Gainsight. Uh Oh gosh, I can't remember it, but that's how work would get done. We would, and then you would go back to your desk. Go, oh, you know what? I've got this file, this file, this file. You'd send them to me. Mm -hmm. Great, it worked. But for me to have done that five years ago, six years ago, I would have had to get on a plane, come to California, right? Drive the car, get a you Uber, whatever, get to the place. Now I'm there. Oh, you weren't. You won't be here for. I'm waiting around. What I'm describing is the pain of human physical presence work in an older school. Now the cloud here. Now COVID happens. Now I don't have access to you at all. Now you're sick. Okay. And now I'm going out and digging. I'm digging around. And like you said, well, it's probably in this file. Okay, I'll share it. But you're sick and you're not feeling well. Okay. So now today we implement your platform. Okay. It's going around. It's okay. Connect to Google, authorize everything. <laughs> now load in PII rules. Now load in <laughs> um, normal uh, permissioning rules that and governance for Hold files, on. right? 
because now I'm descripting describing the problem set where I live, we live in a corporation, we live in a community of people who are using information that may be sensitive, restricted. Yep. Then there's the, um, the other thing is like, okay, now you're my manager. If I was internal and there's files around my performance, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't need to be getting into that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is really comp So what, well, effectively what I'm doing now is I have a platform and a tool set where we can collaborate a little bit more easy. I can find stuff and I can get the knowledge out, extricate that knowledge of the tool, of the, the, the documents and the things that help me to learn and build that content. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll address two things in there. The first one, I mean, security, right? Like we, we yeah. take that very seriously. Um, fundamentally, Glean respects the permissions of every single data source application, right? So whether it's Drive, Slack, Confluence, Jira, Asana, whatever it may be, yeah. if you don't have access in that tool, you're not going to have access in Glean, just like point okay. of the end of, you know. Not take, end of just, we're not doing discussion. anything wrong. Okay, cool. Right. So it, it's always going to respect that. Um, and, and that's obviously really important to us um, on so many levels. But but yeah, we, we always respect the permissions of the source application. Um, and then I'll get to the first point you were talking about of like, yeah. you'd have to, you know, ping me while you were in St. Louis and say, hey, I'm going to come into town next week. Can we find time and then fly and get in the car and do all those things? Um, I'll just, I'll, I'll frame it in this ex it, wonderful way is we actually at Gainsight had this amazing, amazing customer. I won't totally name drop her, um, but really wonderful. And so when I joined, I said, Hey, you know, I really respect your opinion on things. Can I just show you Glean and get your take on it? And we were talking and, and we started talking kind of about this pain point, right? Of I have the information I've built stuff on it, but what used to happen is you would ask me the question and then I would respond to your Slack and say, yeah, give me a second. And then I would go into drive and I would find the file and I would click on copy the share link, make sure I had done the right share settings, copy and paste it back to you. And then you would, you know, figure out if you, how you could share it widely. Um, and I was talking to this CS leader and she just goes, she goes, do you remember a couple of years ago that there was that funny thing of here, let me Google that for you. <laughs> <laughs> here let me glean that for you and so we actually now have um tote bags that say here let me glean that for you because she came up with it and she said it's exactly that right it's it's no longer i'm the gatekeeper to the knowledge that i have as long as i set the sharing settings to what i want it to be and what it should be anybody can go find it and so we, we've had this funny discussion of is it too snarky to say that to people? Is it <laughs> passive aggressive? Well, that's what makes products yeah. sticky, my friend. Right? <laughs> okay. I mean, I, you know, I've even gotten a little bit more bullish with it is we actually do have a Slack bot as well, where you can actually query Glean in Slack. And when somebody asks me a question or when I'm sending a file to a customer over Slack, I'll just do slash Glean, do the query, click share the file, and it shares the file with them directly. So I'm on one hand kind of showing customers here how you can use it. That's definitely something I learned from the Gainsight days is just show people how you can use the product. Just show me. Yeah. Even internally, I've definitely had some team members who will slack me and be like, okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, it's it's a soft way of saying here, let me glean that for you. But what we're allowing people to to on so many levels, we're freeing up time. But one of the things we're freeing up time on is me being the gatekeeper and having to help you find the information that already exists and that I've already created and is already shared with everybody. It was just hard to find before. And so I'm no longer also spending minutes on being a gatekeeper of knowledge, which is great because to your point, nobody has time to be doing that. Um, so that's how I think of it is, is that here, let me glean that for you. I think it's actually a really both fun and brilliant. Um, well, now I can talk through kind of my audience where, mm -hmm. You know, as a services company, what we do at, at Service Rocket is, is is a lot of every kind of everything. I mean, we we can do customer success and customer support and integrations and app development and the whole list goes on. And education is one of those things. We're helping yeah. build the the interstitial economy of knowledge. And a lot of that is, hey, I've got to use this app to do this thing. I need to understand how to do this app. I love the applications that are so sticky in that they're their own meta training where <laughs> what, what you kind of answered to me is I'm always looking for a unique edge to take a, take a solution and use it 
to train other people. Like, okay, Google, you know, Google is, if anybody wants to look up something now, they go to Google, right? Mostly. Yeah. There's other the other places out there. DuckDuckGo, I use a little bit, you know, I've tried that and other sites. But really, you say, can I Google that? Can I, what is that? That's a verb now. Googling yeah. is a legit verb that means to look something up on Google. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> but this has been a real problem. Um, now, as you've been talking, I want to go back in time a little bit to, I used to work at a company called Tertara. It was formerly called Tripos. It was a early startup in software that did, oh my gosh, like my brain hurts thinking about it now. My background, Lauren, is in chemistry. So I have a degree in computational chemistry. Oh. So what I was doing, yeah, it sounds crazy. I'm like, Why did I do this? Um, <laughs> I like to learn. <laughs> so um, we were, I found myself in as a customer su support scientist. I'll let that sink in. My That's role, cool. yeah, my role was to work with customers who had a plat, had this product was a, um, was a behemoth. It was massive. It was called Sipple too, which if you're, you may not have had this and you were in sociology. I remember in sociology and psychology courses, we are, we had to read this book on Sybil who had this multiple personality disorder. That yep. product had a multiple personality disorder. It had 50 yep. different modules that did all kinds of crazy stuff. And they were all super science and they were all like, well, I don't understand this at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So put myself back in time. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in this confluence point between education, support, documentation, yep. and engineers who are developing this really complex app platform. And the thing didn't work. And we were using Silicon graphic workstations, machines, a hardcore stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. I was in a point where we were implementing a, a platform called, I think it was like called HT dig. Um, it was a search Python script nastiness yeah. or even worse. I don't know, but it would go and it would just scrape everything and do all, and it was a bear and we had to install it and do all this other stuff. And just to be able to harvest the knowledge and get that information out in a way that made sense was intractable problem. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I was frustrated because part of my job, because I was a poor person was to dig up that information and find it. But all the other support people that I was working with, they had the similar problems, right? Yeah. And it ended up being, all right, screw it. I'm going over. I'm going to talk to the people in engineering and just have them show me. I give up. Yeah. I give up. So this is uh, this is revolutionary. Um, and I you know I think your pro platform and product has been kind of like developing for a while. But the let you let me Google that. Let me glean that for you. That's much needed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and it's interesting you bring up when I, a lot of the, or I'm thinking about some of the support or use cases that we hear really regularly and support is a really common one because that problem still exists. And you think about software today and the speed with which development happens, there's constantly new questions. There's constantly new products and functionality and things getting changed. Um, and so some of our early adopting customers, it was the support teams who were just saying, look, the answers technically live in you know this internal wiki but they also live in slack because sometimes the wiki doesn't have the answer and so we're asking a question there and then you know the answer is happening there and, and then the same question gets asked 15 times in that slack channel and um and so the support team said look we we really we need to have answers quickly there's a tangible metric that we're being held accountable to which is our sla our response time and our close time and we want to do better at it and so a, a number of our early adopting customers were those support organizations. And in fact, we've had a couple where they've just kind of changed the entire process internally. And it goes, assign the ticket to yourself, answer it if you know the answer. If you don't glean it, then you can ask the question. And they almost do the, here, let me glean that for you. If, if somebody doesn't follow that process and they ask the question and the answer is gleanable, <laughs> they get a little slap on the wrist, right? Yeah. And that's that's just become the expectation. And they've you know, we talk to these customers and they say, look, our SLA time has gone down. Our time to close has gone down. But also just the number of questions that we get has gone down from between our own team. And then the one that, you know, makes me happy because I'm the person who does this to our support teams is the questions from other team members outside of the support organization has also gone down because they're kind of spreading that use glean first before you just hop into our Slack channel and ask us a question. Um, 
So yeah, it's, it's interesting that that's the use case you bring up because it is, it's one of the big ones and it's one of the ones that can really, um, to your point, it can get a little bit meta on that one too. Yeah, you can get meta, but that fine, that's, that's really, now I'm thinking, Lauren, about education and you can, you can probably tell, and our, our listeners probably can tell this too. I'm, I'm on kind of a mission mm -hmm. and that mission is to organize a collection of technologies and tools yep. in the modern era that allows us to really explode out in the knowledge that we have, but in a structured and curated way where what, what we're really talking about, Lauren, is this problem of knowledge mining, knowledge management, yep. uh, curation, and okay, I'll use the word digital transformation. You're, we're, we're completing the puzzle where I need, uh, okay, let, let's take another example. Going back to when I'm, I'm trying to build an education program, the hardest thing ever is like really canvassing, asking questions of the Oracle. Dear Oracle, what is it that's the best practice for this thing? We've got 10 million different people making 10 million different best practices. What one is the most used or the value valued? So being able to actually look in and down and bubble mm -hmm. up some of these things gives me an analytical advantage where yeah. I can go, well, let's, let's do this. Let's say, Lauren, I'm, I'm going to learn about the product from you. I could spend some of my time in advance to look for myself. We're mm -hmm. talking in education and in SaaS, self-service is key. Yep. Scale is unlocked by individuals in working environments, being able to source materials on their own without help with very limited cognitive load. And what the other thing that I think you just kind of exposed is let's talk about the ROI. Have, do you have case studies that have demonstrated that you just talked about SLA and other impact metrics Yeah. that, and I, this is the language I talk about. We talk about success all the time. Yeah. I want to see if you're saying just glean it like, okay, I'm an exec, I'm sold. Uh, how do I, I'm like, where do I sign? <laughs> you know? But, but more than that, that exec is going to ask this one question. Have you calculated or can you show me the ROI? Yeah. Yeah. What, and just high level, what kind of percentage or impact metrics are, are you seeing coming out of this work you're doing? Yeah. So there's, there's two things I'm going to pull out of there. And one I'll answer. And then Dave, we could have an entire second conversation on this topic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I'll answer the question of ROI. But um, a lot of our, you know, our main contacts within our customers have that knowledge management title, which is awesome to yeah. see, right? Like that's their role and responsibility. There's one customer where they, we have this quote from them where they said, my team finally trusts me to get them the information that they need. And so that's, you know, that's just a feel good ROI. But that's also, right, then gets us into the ROI conversation of what are they, you know, what are these team members now able to do? But the, the knowledge team can also learn from Glean, which is where I start to get super excited. We have, uh, we obviously have insights dashboard, right, where you can see what usage looks like. But my favorite report in there is top searches where nobody clicks. So I search, let's say I searched for PTO and there just wasn't an answer. There wasn't information within my company. Glean's going to show you as a knowledge manager, mm. that, hey, this search is happening you know, the search has happened 45 times in the last month and nobody clicked on anything, which we're kind of taking to mean they didn't find anything valuable enough for them to look at it or preview it or share it with somebody else. And so that's now as a knowledge manager, I can say, oh, I don't even have to necessarily go ask folks what's missing. I can just see what's missing, where there's content that we need to build out. So like I said, we could probably talk about that for... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, wait, like that, that yeah. matters a lot. So that knowledge manager, now there's other of those people. There is yep. a, an enablement team. Yep. So I'm talking a lot with enablement. In fact, later today, you'll see an episode um, of, a, of the C-Lab podcast where I'm talking with somebody about enablement squarely. And they come, they have even worse the problem that I have because, but probably are better set up to leverage a system where I can go in and query and look at those queries and internally, I know, oh my gosh, my sales team doesn't really, they're asking me, how do I do this pitch? Okay. And they can't find any answers and the, yeah. or the way the uh, pitch is, or the, uh, whatever it is. It, and I say that all the time. It's yeah. the gap in, if we're running those gap searches, 
we do this. Let's talk about an education from an external point for in customer education. What I would commonly do is go into our services platform or our, su our support platform. I would do a query and pull out all of those exactly the same kind of thing you're saying. What are the top questions that people have? But I would also do this. Actually, you know what? This is talk solving a problem because who are the best people to solve that problem that customers have often support? Somebody calls the support and they say, ah, how do I do this? And if support's getting that question, that's going in our system. That And those people are going into your platform to ask the question because they need to solve it for the customer. So it's really an intrinsic, extrinsic tool. Yeah. Wow. That's it, neat. The way the way I've been talking about it internally here, and I, you know, I'm coming at this from a total customer success lens is yeah. our direct customers are the knowledge managers, are the administrators of the platform, the people connecting the data sources, obviously the executive sponsors, right? Who are kind of saying, yeah. look, I, you know, I think we need this. I'm putting my name on it. Their customers is every other team member at the company. And some of those people even have actual customers, right? The support teams, the entire go-to-market function, they have actual customers who are also getting an improved experience because of Glean, right? And so there's kind of this like trickle down of value to our, ma our main customers, the folks we're talking to on a daily basis. I, you, I mean, this is total gain site, right? I'm just, you could like go on this forever, but, but it does, it eventually gets to the customers, the the customers of our of the companies we're working with. And, and we hear that from support team members. We hear that. Um, one of the groups that we've been hearing that increasingly from recently is from SDRs within companies too, is I used to have oh. to say, you prospect, I'll get back to you on that question, right? Because they're fielding oftentimes pretty difficult questions really early on in the process. And they're, you know, there's not necessarily a sales engineer on the call with them. And so they're saying, look, I'll follow up with you. You're now implementing an additional email step into the sales cycle. And they're saying, look, I can just glean for the answer while I'm on the call with the prospect, answer the question. And then there's not a, let me get back to you. It's a, okay, so next step is I introduce you to the sales rep. That's obviously beneficial to the company because they want to move prospects through the sales cycle as quickly as possible. It's also beneficial to the prospect because I don't, if I'm a prospect, I don't really want to have to wait for an email. I want my answer now. Um, so, th so there is this trickle down, right? When in some ways I, again, I've been talking about internally is like, we have layers of customers, right? Our customers aren't just our admins or our executive sponsors. Our customers are their customers. And then on top of that, their customers, right? So it it gets, uh, we're back to the pretty meta. It's like the movie Inception. We used to always say Gainsight. So Gainception. <laughs> <back there. laughs> oh my gosh. Actually, I want to respond to that. And then we've got four minutes. So, yeah. if, uh, so if there were any questions out there in the audience, please ask them now. If you want to challenge us, please do um, yeah. get out there and, if you're time traveling and you see this in the future, do the same thing. We're going to, we're going to respond. But the closing thought, I think, before we do the outro is this. So I worked at Outreach for, you know, several years. Yeah. And now I'm actually, now I understand that pain that you're talking about. And now, now actually in my current role, I do a lot more sales. I'm on a call. I'm mentally overloaded at the moment because I'm fully engaged with the customer. In, in the SDR world, we, we, we're now calling the sales engagement right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that we're trying to keep, you want to sell, you want to buy something from me. I'm trying to sell something to you. You go, Dave, can you do an integration to Salesforce? Okay. I might be in the thing about sales, sales development reps or business development reps, their job is really excruciatingly difficult for yeah. the amount of disappointment and agony that you have so that yeah. minute that that time that, that that gap that goes from why can't dave just answer this effing question because he should know this what you don't know is i just started the company two weeks ago and i might be a really great salesperson but i don't understand the the infrastructure yeah. so if i could go <clears throat> and what really excited me too and i'm not trying to help people or or you know do their stack stuff but and outreach, I might be sitting there with Slack and I'm like, I could hit your API, boom, 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 get that information back. It's right there. I could uh, then go, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, Lauren, it's yes. And the answer is yes. And it's a native integration. And we can get that installed for you within a week of your close. Yep. Done, right? That closed the deal. Yeah. Wow. Super cool. This is really fun. This has really been a fun discussion, Lauren. I appreciate your time here. 
Uh, been great. Anything else you want to talk about with the audience? Otherwise, I'll start my journey out the door and we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up. No, I'll let you do the outro, but this is, you know, back to the origin story. This has fulfilled all of the little sociologists in me getting to have a discussion and, and really kind of go back and forth and, and think about things from a new lens. So I appreciate it. This has been super fun. Well, I appreciate you. It's really actually even better to be able to talk and reconnect and our yeah. paths have gone different ways, but we've, we've stayed connected over the years. Yeah. Um, Glean's website is www.glean.com, right? Easy to yep. find, easy to get to. Um, you can be found here because we're right in LinkedIn, but if you're on YouTube, we're also streaming live on YouTube. Uh, it's LDCA Kennedy, two N's, right? Yep. On your LinkedIn profile. Yep. Um, fabulous. And again, I have to do my, my spiel here. I work at Service Rocket and we have, and I'm going to share my little thing. I have to do this because, uh, oh, where is it? Um, more our presentation tool isn't working great today. I don't know what's happening here. Um, let me, oh, here we go. Do, to do, do, to do. Yes. Okay. What I need to show you is we have continued to expand our program. So if if you want to talk education, you want to talk education and impact, you want to talk about reporting and analytics and certification, how do I get started? Where do I go next? What's What do I have to do? What am I going to expect? Come and talk to us. I'm talking to people like Lauren every day. And what we're doing is we're trying to navigate this world of amazingly complicated but powerful software, connect it to solve your customers' problems. So come reach out, talk to me. I also do have a website, uh, customer.education is uh, the website that I co-host with Adam Evermescu. And there's an episode going live in just a few moments. It's customer.education. Uh, you can learn a lot about how we do our jobs right there. So let me stop sharing and then I will wrap up today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, again, you can find me at LinkedIn and, uh, once again, brand new show here. If you've got questions, if you've got comments, if anything you want to do, use LinkedIn to do it. We want to talk to you. Uh, we're also actively looking for more participants. So if you want to talk about your platforms, you want to talk about the problems you're experiencing and platforms that don't exist, if you want to talk about your programs, I want to talk to you. Once again, thanks again for joining us. Get out there, solve problems, work out loud. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>